Ah, uh, that, that looks better. Whoa, way loud now, right? Nope. That's up there. Hopefully that... Nope. No? Nope. What, is mute on? No, it's not muted. Sound? Oh. No? Oh, I just got a thumbs up. Everything's good. The, the peak volume's going good. That's what you love about live streaming, and we don't have our own production crew. Good. Keith White. Hey, how's it going? Nico, Marlon, you, you guys can hear me. Miss Dawn Davis, Tony. Yeah, everything good? Sound is good. Okay. Tried doing it with the wireless mic, so I'm not stuck into this. So here's what we got going on. Did an engagement session today. We've done, as I shared, a lot of back-to-back -back events. And Dawn, Dawn, I don't know, where did you get that uh, tip for aftershoot software? Dawn doesn't remember. Anyways, I'm going to share a little bit of our workflow. We've implemented a new piece of software called Aftershoot. And what it is, is it's an AI, artificial intelligence, for culling. Right, calling takes a lot of time sometimes because we're a little bit attached to the photos for the emotion and we want to zoom into each and every face and pull out, make sure it's sharp, checking all the quality. What Aftershoot does, and if anybody's used it there, uh, give me a thumbs up, but it's re and you could do a free download. They're not sponsoring us. They're, we paid our own way, but I just found it's really helpful for our workflow. And John, I've even started using it for wildlife. Uh, bear safari I did and it picked out the faces of the bear and it was great. So what after shoot does is it goes through your images, loads them in, and it starts the culling process. So it's going to pick the best one of every scenario that you photographed. Then it's going to separate them down into blurred photos, eyes closed, duplicates, sneak peeks, and then your selects. And then from there, I'll take that in uh, to Lightroom, the selects. So I've already downloaded our images and I always use Photo Mechanic for downloading and I'm gonna go through this and show you that. The reason why is A, it's fast, B, it's for captioning and keywording. It's the software that I've been using since I was a photojournalist back, back at the Chicago Sun-Times when we would scan film in and there's really nothing better. It's even faster than Lightroom with their metadata and things like that. And um, Photo Mechanic, they're sticky panels. So let me, so it's been a while since I've used this. Uh, we'll switch here. There we go. You can see me and we have our panel. So great. I've already ingest all of the photos and I'll show you how I did that with Photo Mechanic. So Photo Mechanic is super fast. So what I do is I still shoot raw on my EOS R5s to the uh, CFast cards, sorry, CF Extremes. So many different cards now. CFast Express, there we go. And then I shoot raw to the CFast Express and large JPEG to the SD cards. Immediately in camera backup. No reason why, you could do raw, raw, whatever floats your boat. And then in Photo Mechanic, you could separate those. So you could see my desktop, right? Can I get... Uh, a thumbs up. Yeah, good. You can see the desktop. So what we do with Photo Mechanic is, I'll get on the desktop here. So here's the ingest dialog. So if I pop in a card, I'll pop it in. I've already done it. You'll see the cards will populate. And what's great about Photo Mechanic is if I load up uh, the card readers, multiple card readers, we have the ability to download eight cards at a time. If I pop all these in, they'll populate there and Photo Mechanic will download them simultaneously. Not one at a time, like Lightroom, but simultaneously. And here's the other great feature is this metadata. All this metadata is searchable, so it's part of your database. So if you're looking for something on all your hard drives, which are indexed, right, because they're connected to your computer, all of this information is part of the database. So you could put in keywords like their wedding date or a name or whatever you put into these fields is searchable. 
So everything goes into the caption, the who, what, when, where, and why, how to contact us, some hashtags, all that information, because every bit of software out there reads that. And this is really important, so none of your photographs end up on the web as orphaned. What I mean by orphaned is that they're not tagged on how to contact you, that they're not copyrighted, and all that information, because it's happened to us and it's happened to other photographers we know, where someone will just download your pictures from Facebook or off your website or from uh, Instagram and they'll use them for whatever reasons but as you could see all of our information is here it's copyrighted and what I meant before by sticky is these drop down fields you can put in different information and it's there and it could populate it so you're not typing it over and over and over so these are, these are various photographers that work with us throughout the year We'll put in principal, associate, bylines, who to credit, copyright, all that information gets embedded into every single image. So we don't have to do it later when we're editing. So that's photo mechanic. And when it's done, it'll um, kick out the files if you want it to. So it's really nice and fast. So photo mechanic can breeze through raw files just like this. Right, where you can't do that in Lightroom. So we used to do all of our calling in Photo Mechanic, checking for everything, manually zooming in, going, oh, are the eyes sharp? Yes, they're sharp. I love that we could see all our metadata. Photo Mechanic also gives you confirmation that all your cards have downloaded successfully. If there's any errors, it will show up here. It also shows me my histogram and all the camera information. So. It's, it's the one piece of software that Don and I both believe we just could not live without. So once we've gotten all the photographs in here, I've already separated the JPEGs from the RAWs, download them simultaneously. Here's all the JPEGs, here's all the RAWs. When they came in and they were stacked together, if I wanted to copy them, I just select an image and then I could say copy. And here you could see, I could tell it what I, do I want it to do. If there was a JPEG file in there, it would give me the option to process both raw and JPEG or just the JPEGs. And I will move and remove, remove those. Because when we load up after shoot, you either want only all the JPEGs or all the raws. So it's not culling the images twice. Because after shoot does not stack the JPEG and the raw files together the way Lightroom and Photo Mechanic does. So let's get out of uh, Photo Mechanic. Any questions before I jump out of Photo Mechanic? Louise, how are you? Lima, Peru. Boy, Don and I had a great time there. We love to come back. We miss traveling. So if there's no questions yet, we're going to close Photo Mechanic so I can have as much resources on my laptop as possible for after shoot. So I'm launching after shoot. Here we go. So I don't store all my previous uh, edits in here because that starts taking up disk space unless you point it to a, um, a, a scratch disk. So we're gonna grab a new album and there's plenty of video tutorials. They have great support. I'm gonna add a folder. So I'm gonna navigate right to where that folder is. So we have it on an external hard drive, which is connected via Thunderbolt. And we're gonna go right to the engagement, oh, wrong couple. So it's Dorfman, go right to their engagement session, and it's all raw images. So let me back up here for a second. Here's our file structure. So we create a Lightroom catalog for every project. It's just safer, more efficient, Lightroom doesn't get heavy when it gets bogged down with thousands and thousands of images. So we have our raw images, our call, our edits for shoot proof, our edits for Facebook, Lightroom, and here's the in-camera JPEGs. So we're gonna select all raw. So once I select that, it's gonna come back over here in after shoot, and then I have to tell it to import the photos. So it's working its way in the background, it's importing the photos, and this can take a little bit of time depending on how many photographs you have in this shoot. 
There you go, it's populated. So you can see here, this is the very beginning when I was setting up in this location. I was trying to lock in my off-camera flash. I was using a, a Westcott FJ400 with a deep throw reflector. It's just gorgeous for photographing in bright sunlight. And then once we got it dialed in, it's great. But you can see over here, here's your quick filters. So we have your selected, sneak peeks, duplicates, blurred images, closed eyes, and warning images, like this out of focus, not out of focus, but overexposed one, we have a big caution warning sign next to it once it does its magic. So when you start the calling process, you have some decisions you wanna make, right? On how tight or how loose you want it to be. So each one of these will walk you through. And if you need help, they have help there for you. So we're gonna make this as tight as possible. We wanna cut right to the meat of it, right? So it's gonna call blurred photos very strict. If we go moderate, it will keep slightly out of focus photos. And if you go lenient, it's gonna give you more to choose from in the blurred photos. So I'm gonna go strict. Duplicates, somewhat similar, right? I want this very tight. I don't wanna to have too many images. Very similar, gives you a good mix between duplicates and grouping and accuracy of results, right? So same thing here with selections and duplicate. I want less, I wanna go really tight. And just because we can, let's give a 10% uh, sneak peek. So I'll start the culling process and we'll let this run. So this could take, you know, I, I called a wedding over the weekend. We had three photographers, I think, geez, a lot of images. And it took it about an hour and it culled it down right to the meat of it. Now, it's still learning, it's AI. So it will learn what you're looking for when you select an image, when you delete an image, when you tell it's a blurred or a duplicate. It's learning that in the background and it's gonna try and remember your preferences. So that's really cool. So I still go through and I'm still checking it, but it has sped up the process. And while it's culling it, we could still look at an image. And when it is done, it'll actually show you the faces and you could zoom in so I'll pick the photo again, and then we could zoom in and move around. So after shoot is actually doing this, so we don't have to zoom in and check, are the faces and are the, uh, are the eyes sharp, right? So it does a really great job. So it's running through doing its process. So we'll go back and let it run. So it's, it's gonna take probably about a good 10, 10, 12 minutes for this to run. So um, in the meantime, I'll check to see anybody's got any questions here. Uh, here, we got a question. Came in late, I use and love Photo Mechanic. Did you talk about the added benefits of Plus? Wondering if there is a difference. Yes, uh, Dawn really ought to jump on this because she's really more the uh, Photo Mechanic power user. I'm the ingest person and a quick call but Photo Mechanic Plus definitely is faster. It's streamlined. You have the ability to do catalogs. And what it does for catalogs is our external hard drives that we have, you can do a catalog of an entire hard drive, then disconnect it, and then you can still search it. So those catalogs are much smaller and it doesn't take up a lot of data footprint on your hard drive. So that, that's extremely important and valuable because then you don't have to keep all your external hard drives and grades connected, right? Or you could take that snapshot with you if you travel with your laptop and then you could search and look for things. Remember, it's only gonna be a thumbnail, but you could still tag, color, rate, and all those sets of things. Um, let's see, anything else? Uh, both of you come. Yeah, we have to go back to Peru. Just reading the comments here, I'd love to. Peru is fun. So uh, while this is running in the background, it's saying it's gonna be about five minutes, I'm gonna switch it up here really quick and go back, where's just me? Just this camera, there we go. So you might wonder what we have going on in the background here. So what I've been doing, and that's why I wanted to have this, is going through our archive and digitally, with my EOS R5 and a macro lens or the 24 to 105, digitally copying instead of scanning 
my images from long ago. So I have an image already on the, on the copy stand over here. I'll pop it over so you guys can see it. Uh, this is Michael Jordan in the first run for the championship. And this was on, geez, uh, probably Fuji Color Neg 1600 film taken at the old Chicago Stadium. And I was up in the organ loft. So you really had to have everything strapped down because you didn't want to drop anything on one of those marquee players in, and cause uh, an injury of any kind. But what I'm trying to share with you is the quality is amazing. This isn't a scan where it goes back and forth and takes forever. This was the negative on a light box. And then I used my R5 to actually copy the file. And then I made prints. So we are going to be opening up and launching a fine art print store where you'll be able to buy these as wall art. And then I'm going to do a live art show coming up where you'll have the chance to get a signed original. So these are some of the cool photographs from my past. Like this photograph was taken in 1994, way pre-digital. Right? So you didn't know what you were getting until you came back and developed the film. Uh, this, this was a great moment. One of the last games that Walter Payton played in as a Chicago Bear, walking off the field. The Bears were winning, and he's looking back at the clock just as he's heading for the tunnel. And when Walter Payton passed away, uh, the Sun-Times ran this photograph as a wrapper, meaning it wrapped around the paper. So his face was on the front page, and it became a poster. And I do believe it was one of the largest circulating editions of the Chicago Sun-Times. And these are all film that were copied with my R5. Here, I'll share one last one, and we'll pop back over and check how the call is going. But uh, this is the Rat Pack. I was 20 years old when I took this, right? Back in 1983. Oh, man, that, that was a night. Actually, Frank Sinatra yelled at me. And there's, there's a whole story to that. And it, uh, talk about being intimidated. Oh, my God. So I go to the Chicago Theater. And back then, you could go anywhere you want. There, it wasn't three songs and out. And you were free to roam around. I was uh, first full-time job at the uh, Daily South Town Economist, smaller daily newspaper in Chicago. I have a Canon AT1 and a Canon A1. No motor drives yet, so it's click and advance black and white Tri-X in each camera. So it's click and advance, two rolls to go, 36 exposures. And they come out and they do a set. My assignment was you got to get a picture with all three of them. And then, of course, a nice tight shot of each one of them. Well, the tight shots were easy because when they came out, they were really far apart. So they filled up the whole stage. Frank on the left, Dean on the right, Sammy in the middle. They were belting out the tunes. And after two or three songs, they stop, you know, they all grab a drink, and they smoke back then, right? And if you want to see more of these, you could go to our storefront. So it's uh, store.bobandawndavis.com. And right after this, Frank takes a sip of the drink, and he looks out into the crowd, and he's leaning back like this. And I could see him through my lens. And he goes, hey, you. He can't be talking to me. He's not talking to me. And I'm, I'm looking through, and I put it down like this, and I look over. And he goes, yeah, you. And I'm like, yeah. He goes, did you get your picture yet? And I'm like, and I'm nodding, yeah. He goes, get the hell out of here. And the whole Chicago theater just starts cheering and clapping, and everybody's laughing. And I tuck my tail between my legs, and I back up the aisle, and I head out the door. I only had a roll and a half of film. Luckily, I was able to get all the photographs I needed because you never want to go back to your picture editor with an excuse. And afterwards, I know I tell this story often, I learned uh, from Bob Katalik at the Chicago Sun-Times is, kid, come back with a good picture or don't come back at all. We can't publish an excuse. So I've embraced that. Uh, let's see. Judy Fikowski. Hey, Judy. How are you? I was, in fact, I was just going through some of my film from the city council. Remember when we got locked into City Hall when Mayor Harold Washington passed away and council wars were going on? Man, what a night. 
I had a broken nose. I came back. I had my nose broken because I had uh, have my deviated septum corrected, and Judy was there, and we're talking on the radio, and we're dropping our film out the windows. What a night. John, did I get the R3 yet? No, no R3, sadly, not yet. Move the cam cap uh, captions over right below the lens. Uh, Dawn, thank you for joining in. Troy, yeah, it, it's, it's really hard to judge the quality this way, but, I mean, it is pretty insane. Uh, I'll flip over to the Lightroom. There we go, the light table. Let me turn this over. So this is the in-between frames, right? So one full frame and then a partial frame left and right. This is film. This is with a 15 millimeter fisheye lens. I'm in the front seat of a biplane during the press day for the air and water show. And you just turn around and the wind is blowing and I got the goggles on and the whole leather helmet and you click off frames and advance, click, advance, click, advance, right? Yep, good old days of film. Um, this is a photograph I, I probably ought to post. Oh, let's go back over. I think the camera shut off. Let me unplug this for a second. There we go. I had to wake the camera up, went to sleep. So does anybody know who this guy is? Anybody? Dave, you're, you're, you're about a three minute lag. Uh, what, honey? You're, you're about a minute and a half lag. Oh, there's a lag. Oh, that's cool. It's captioning. Oh, I'm just checking my phone. That's awesome. Captions, very cool. Um, looking at the calling process, it has three minutes to go for the full call, so hang in. So uh, this is from the greatest rock and roll, roll band, and this was taken. Yes, Charlie. Hey, Jim, how's it going? Charlie Watts. So what's cool is I haven't made any of these prints. This was from, I believe, 1992, Soldier Field. And what's cool in the print, and I'll go to a different shot, but there's a set list written in grease pencil on the uh, plexiglass surrounding Charlie that had their set list for the night, right? Uh, I got another shot here. Oh, here it is. It's Keith. And again, these, this is all film. So I was amazed, totally amazed at the quality. So here in this image, you can see Keith. It's written on the outside for Keith, the set list, and written on the inside for Charlie. So it's backwards one way and forwards the other. So it, it was just a kind of a real treat to see these because I never printed any of these. They only made two prints for edition. Two photographs from this entire concert that I got to photograph for the Sun-Times, right? That was it. Ronnie Wood did a lot of concerts. I used to work the overnights. Mick, I know these are all in upside down. But this is just kind of a preview to the live art show we're going to do. And these are all printed on Hannah Mule paper, fine art paper. I mean, it's just stunning that we're getting this kind of quality and control from not better than a scan. This is way better than when I was trying to use a film scanner. And the film scanner takes forever. It's back and forth. Right? And then you bring them into Lightroom, and then you could tweak it to your heart's content. And Aerosmith. Funny story, even with this picture of Aerosmith. Um, so this, this was kind of a unique moment. Steven Tyler wrote on his tummy, and he had all kinds of funny hair stuff going on, around, makeup around his eye. And a few years back, we were doing some college visits with our son, and we went to Culinary Institute of America in New York. So because we're frequent flyers and we got miles and all that, we have the Admiral's Club. So we go into the Admiral's Club, and we sit down, and all of a sudden, you know, we're sitting there looking out at the field. You hear this voice, right? And there's no mistake in it. It's Steven Tyler because you just know his voice. So I turn around, and there he is. He's got his hair all up in a ponytail. He's dressed like Steven Tyler. And he's sitting right behind us. So I, I had a few of these images on my phone, right? 
So I didn't want an autograph or anything. I just thought it was cool. I was just going to go over and say hi. So I pulled up this photo on my phone. And I was like, oh, hey, Stephen, it was you know, really awesome to meet you. I recognize your voice. He goes, yeah, I'm just hanging out, waiting for a flight. And he immediately knew the year and that that was at Chicago at the United Center. He said that was the only time he had done that with the uh, putting words. It actually, there's another photograph of this. If you go to our story, you can see it. But it's P, it's P-H-U-K, and it says, fuck it, right? It says it right there on his tummy, and he recognized that. So that was, that was pretty cool. Yep, uh, oh, it's right down the road from you, Jim? Oh, it's a beautiful area on the Hudson. Beautiful. All right, so let's pop back over. Here we go, and you could see it's working its magic. So... We're back to after shoot, back to the call, right? And you can see what it's doing. It's finishing up. There's about eight seconds. You can see the colors that it has going on here. So green is letting me know that there's closed eyes. And once this is done, about nine seconds, I'll go over it and show it to you. You know, it puts these little happy faces. It has these cool little entertaining uh, messages that come across. So. It completed, took 14 minutes, 39 seconds for the call. It sends you an email. And out of 1,170 photographs, it called it down to 312 selected and 39 sneak peeks, right? And it tells you here in the interface that there's two similar to this one. So if we go in, that's kind of really bright and overexposed, but if we go in here, it zooms in on the faces for you to let you know that they're sharp. And it also shows you over here the pick, one where the eyes are closed, and the other one. So we could go through those and see them. So if I'm over here, we could cycle through those and see it totally is correct. His eyes are closed, right? So this whole series here for me, you know, while we could use it, this is while I was doing the light testing, so it's a bit overexposed. So we could dump that, right? Because we have these and the quality is much better here. So if I go into here, it's telling me that there's two. One similar, it's the pick, and one similar, and it already zooms in. And then we could go back and forth to see, well, sometimes I don't like what it picks. And this is one of those instances. So it's still learning. We've only been using this for a month. So the select is red, purple is the similar. And for me, I like his smile much better. So I know on the keyboard, the six is the select, and I can make the other photograph the duplicate by hitting the minus key. So it's gonna learn what I'm liking. And then I could use the left and right arrow to go to the next frame, right? And it keeps showing your duplicates, and it goes right through. Now, once you get it fully trained, and you want to go and output everything, this is where we could save our changes that we've made. And we could check some of the warnings. Is there anything you guys, let's check the questions over here. No questions yet? So we could go in and say, oh, these are just the sneak peeks. And this is kind of cool if you're working and, and you want to give this couple, we just did their engagement session today, and if I want to provide a sneak peek right away, well, we'll go through the sneak peeks and we'll make a selection, right? And the what um, Aftershoot says, if you watch their videos and stuff, is there's an algorithm behind this that it, it's geared toward Instagram, so it, it's going to know what Instagram likes and what trends well and what people react to. Yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't know how true that is because really um, their faces are in a hard shadow. I, I wouldn't use that as a sneak peek, but again, it's just in its learning phases. So the more you use it, the better it gets. Closed eyes, so it's right on. There's 48 photos with closed eyes. And sure enough, here we go, closed eyes, right? So we don't want any of the closed eyes. Let's see, blurred. Sometimes blurred photos aren't really blurred. It's just that I was photographing at Aperture 2. But there you go, it looks right at the face there, and it is blurry. 
right? They're more blurred and it grabbed the background a little bit on that one. All right, so we'll go back. So it does a really good job at that. So we'll go back to our selects. Take a look at a few of these. And remember, these are raw right out of the camera. So we'll refine them. Beautiful. So when the flash is fire, oh, wrong frame. This one. So when our flash is on the money, there you go. It's right on. But there you go. Okay. So this picked it, and his eyes are kind of shut. So it's still learning. So we want to make that, I forget, what our eyes shut. You got to remember, eyes closed is blue. So come back here. His eyes are kind of closed. So we're going to tag that, right? Then we could go through the rest of these. And here's the pick. That's right on. It picked it well, right? He's looking at her. Nice stride. Good composition. Boom. So after shoot, I still don't 100% tr trust it. I still go through and I look at them. And I still want to verify them. I love this moment. Really nice, a little shy, both eyes are closed. I love the body language. Sometimes I tilt on accident. I'm gonna blame it on, I'm deaf in my left ear, so I tend to tilt that way, right? Here you go, this is nice, beautiful. So for the most part, it has sped up our culling process and workflow. And then we'll take these on it. That's a nice one. And you can see there's five similar photographs to it. And I could quickly go through these and see, do I like any one of them better? And I think that, I think the pick is it. I mean, you could really get granular on this. You could say, well, we want both her feet down and his off. And if we want that to be a pick too, well, we could just add it to it, just make it red, and then it will go right into our selected. All right, that's uh, after shoot. So we're going to save our changes. And then if we want to export, I'll show you that. You can export right to Lightroom, but I'm going to remove those colors and tags because we have our own um, smart catalogs within Lightroom that we have sorted out for our engagement sessions, for weddings and things like that. So I'm gonna export, export it to a folder. Here we go. I'm gonna take sneak peeks and, I mean, uh, select it in sneak peeks. I'm gonna choose my destination and we're gonna keep it all together. There we go. And we're gonna put those in raw call, boom. And we're going to tell it to move the photos instead of copying them. So we don't have to double down on the data. And then if I put something back, there we go, it copied it. Then I'll refine that and we'll load it up into Lightroom. So I hope you guys found that useful. Check out Aftershoot. They have a free trial on it. It's, it I think it's really worth messing around with. You know, it's learning. It's sped things up. It's narrowed down the call instead of having to go through everything. Now I just go through these and we get things done a lot quicker. So let me jump over here, see if there's any more questions. No questions? All good. All right, guys, thanks again. Have a great evening. And if you do have any questions, drop them in the feed and I'll answer them and I'll put a link to after shoot in photo mechanic. Thanks again and have a great evening.